Good morning, Tim and Jim and Mark and Chloe. Good morning, James. Good morning. Good morning. And you didn't even notice I started in the wrong key. Well, no, but I noticed that you noticed. <laughs> but I didn't know what you noticed uh, because that's, I don't know, I didn't know. What happened? What, what happened there then? Oh, we, we didn't set a note before. <laughs> oh, well, uh, you, could, you couldn't tell. I really, really Hey, were the masters tell. of getting away with it. All right, so, so here we go. So here we go. You've had... Um, is it nine top ten albums so far? This is your eighteenth album, Yummy. It's out. It's out now, and it's uh, number one of the midweeks. But you've sort of been here before, midweek wise. Who did for you last time? Uh, Adele, oh. I think. <laughs> came last that Adele, Adele lady. Adele. And, and this week we have the wonderful Beyonce. Yeah, but I mean, maybe you know, maybe her her star has peaked. I don't know. Um, uh, but it's exciting times, nonetheless. Exciting times. I mean, for a band that's been going forty one years, we'll, we'll we'll take that. Of course you'll take that. And um, James are here um, in no small thanks to something that happened between a school disco and a scout hut. Is that right? Yeah. Well, a university disco. I was dancing wildly on the dance floor, as I do. Uh, My girlfriend had left me, so I was particularly like throwing myself around. For lots of reasons. (laughs) Lots of reasons. And Jimmy here was stealing my drink. But they were watching me going, oh, he's an interesting dancer. Right. And um, I went over and went, oh, you're stealing my drink. And three of them stood up. And I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, help can I yourself. Get you another one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can I get another one. And um, and they said, uh, like you're dancing, we've got a band. Would you like to dance for us? And they wrote their number on the back of my hand. And I woke up in a hangover state the next morning with this strange number written on my, right. my wrist and followed that up. And you rehearsed in a scout hut. Is that what happened? Is that? Yeah, Withington Scout Hut. Yeah, in Manchester. How cool is that? Thank you. Big up Withington Scouts there. I know. They've knocked it down, unfortunately. Oh, it's not no. there anymore. I know. It's She's had some it? kind of preservation order on it. I'd like to think so. When was it? So, so pre Tim, yeah. when was the first time you ever plugged anything in in that scout hall? And um, You were called Tribal something, weren't you, at the time? Oh, well, Tribal Outlook, Model Team International, before they took us to court. There was a, a modelling agency in Manchester called Model Team International. <laughs> and Paul had a right. girlfriend at the modelling agency. So we get T-shirts with the name on, right? And then this guy came down to the Cypress Tavern where we were playing and said, "No, you can't call it your was band." It's the T-shirts that did it. The T-shirts. That yeah, did if it. you hadn't been greedy, you'd have been fine. Exactly. So then we were model team for a bunch of right. kind of time, and then and then yeah, James. Uh, Do you remember the first time Tim pitched up in the Scout Hut? <sighs> do you, Tim? No, I don't think I do. Yeah, yeah, I do. It was it was like oh they're promising. I mean, it was very simple. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Yeah. <laughs> could have, no, could have was, been another it, name. I liked it. It was like it was very naive and innocent, but it had some magic to it that was you could just see. You know, it was unusual. It was it was post punk time, so yeah, yeah. You know, playing brilliant solos wasn't it. It was about originality and and unusualness. Yeah, and no, had, I know. And, and Tony Wilson, Hacienda, you know, etc. I know it's all part of the story. And um, and so they they asked you to come and dance because you were funky and they could do with a bit of that on stage. How, how did you cross the Rubicon to become the singer? What happened? Uh, they got rid of the other singer. And did uh, they know you could sing though? Uh, they like within a week I was. Pl- we could, were. Open- did you know you could sing? Sorry. No, no I didn't really. Right. I hadn't sang since I was about eleven in the in the choir, and um, I didn't know I could write lyrics. And and they. Um, yeah, I was within a week. I was shaking a tambourine and singing back in vocals, supporting Orange Juice in Sheffield, and and you know, terrified. I mean, come uh, on. And then we those, just those were the days. <laughs> those were the days. Back of a butcher's van, driving yeah. to yeah, yeah. gigs. Being at, at the deep end, man. Yeah, man, it was completely yeah. like that. Oh and, gosh. Um. So, um, what's nice about all bands coming in? You know, I know you've been here before. It was great last time you came. It's great now. Um, is that we can have a bit of an origin, you know, uh, sort of throwback. Uh, can you give us a, you know, over the last forty-one years now? Congratulations, by the way. Um. Uh. How, how's what's the biggest the band's been? Now. We sell more tickets now than we. No, ever. I didn't mean that. I mean like from from um, a size. personnel. A size. Have you ever been like <laughs> Weight. Eagles? As well? Weight personnel. <laughs> now uh, yeah. it's still now. Um, How we, many people? Nine piece. Nine piece. Yeah. yeah. Full time nine piece. Yeah. yeah. Two. Yeah. Didn't, so like you're right up there with like, UB14, Goldie Looking Chain, and all that. Absolutely. Aren't you? Yeah. So so nine's the biggest it's ever been. Uh, yes, it is. Yeah. All right. Some some peak peaks on along the way. Some highlights along the way. Uh, I mean, last summer we played the Acropolis with an orchestra and gospel choir, and it was it's the oldest musical venue in the world. I mean, it dates wow. back to Plato and blah blah blah. And we were like in this amphitheater, and the Acropolis is behind Incredible. it. The original hacienda. 
<laughs> Absolutely. I mean, it was so hot, they actually closed it all down about four days later. So we just got in and we filmed it. So we're looking forward to editing that and getting into that. Oh, and one of your songs was a big hit on American college radio. Is that mm, right? That's Which right. one was that? Was Laid. That? Laid. All right. So, so, so what does that, what, what does having a, a, a hit on American college radio, what does that do for you as a band in the US? I mean, we were we were doing really well. We were playing to about four or five thousand in most cities, um, and the late album sold over a couple million in America and did really well for us. And then we followed it up with an improvised industrial album called Wawa, which um, completely was financial suicide, commercial <laughs> suicide. Um, but, you know, for a moment, we, we, were, cont we were contenders, mate. We were contenders. Yeah, no, but every stone is a stepping stone to, to the future, isn't it? And to the eventual present, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, the, the truth is, I don't think we could have handled America. It was, it was so intense. And that level of fame, when I meet people who've been through it, yeah, it's, yeah. It, you know, it rings you out. The good Lord has intervened and held us back occasionally and I think for a good thing to be honest with you yeah they, they do say so somebody saying yesterday about you know you never can never step in the same river twice obviously we know that that's a i love that phrase yeah. but but they pointed out yesterday it's not just about the river being different but the the foot that's stepping in it is different and they say you can never watch the same film twice um, and yeah. because it's not just about watching the film and seeing things you've uh, never seen before you're a different person when you watch that film oh you're full of wisdom today Chris. well i just i just i want i just want to equate it to songwriting mm. because obviously you are a lot older than you were and you'll be older still mm. um is there a period in your careers and your lives and your your sort of band life when songwriting seems to have come uh, more fluidly and more easily i know it's always different you know are there peaks and their troughs uh, do you have to be more reflective now i don't know just speak to that if you don't mind songwriting has always been quite effortless for us right uh, four of us go in a room jam set a drum machine no one takes anything in the room beforehand and it's we do six hours a day and we do a hundred jams and then we choose which of the hundred we're going to work on amongst ourselves and make them into demos and then we so that's fun man. It sounds like fun we love it it's so okay. beautiful we, <laughs> like, we like at the moment we're yeah. trying to hire a place in broughton hall in in yorkshire overlooking the moors you know it's such it always Why not? get out in nature away from everyone calling we, you we tend to go to a big house and just kind of all batten down the hatches yeah. and kind of live together for a week or so and just kind of just just right. hang out with your mates yeah, and yeah. play. Absolutely. It's Back to of, the scale hut. One of our favourite practices, yeah. really. Because you have a sound. James have a sound. You know, and this you have that sound going on. It's, 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 in my ears, it's like, yes, it's a signature sound. Is there a place where you've recorded that, that's the most James friendly? Uh, I'd say at the moment, I mean, like this album, Yummy, um, we had more demos that we thought could have gone on the album than we've ever had. So we've released a follow-up to Yummy called Pudding, which is all the uh, yeah, yeah. which is all the extra bits that didn't make it because we've had more. So Yorkshire is 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 uh, that what's called Pudding? Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> Yorkshire Pudding. Uh, I thought it was like your, I, I didn't know it's Pudding for Afters because you got more to come or Yorkshire Pudding. I didn't know which one. Be oh, better oh, both. Yeah, better both. All right. Well, congratulations. It's great to see you. Honestly, you you seem on great form. I'm so pleased. Um, and if you want to go and see James uh, as they're playing these amazing gigs, you'll never have a better gig. You'll never be gigged better, um, whether you like it or not, than when you go and see James. Monday, 3rd of June, Aberdeen. Uh, Wednesday, 5th of June, Newcastle. Friday, 7th of June, Glasgow. And then you have Leeds on the 8th. Cardiff on the 11th of June. Wednesday, the 12th of June, Birmingham. Friday, June 14th, Manchester. Carp Live. Uh, Saturday, 15th of June, London at the O2. WeAreJames.com for tickets. Well, that's a great song, man. Thank you. Man. Oh, really God. appreciate it. When does a band decide to do la da -da's in a song? I've always wondered that. <laughs> when is it okay to la da -da? Is it like when you're super confident? Nah, I mean, that song, you know, because the lyric is so on the nail and could be a bit depressing. Yeah. So we we contrasted it with a very uplifting piece of music. And then the la da -da's are there. Yeah, because it's not depressing at all. It's just, it's it's honest, it's real, it's in the now, it's a surrender to the moment. It's to, it, we're talking before about, you know, um, if, if you, if you, wake up every morning thinking in your own little dictatorship in your head uh, this is how life's supposed to be then you're going to be disappointed that day whereas if you just wake up to how life is then you're going to have a great day and that's sort of where you are with that song yeah totally i mean we th we think it's a a, a lyric that 
tells you where we're at it's right brilliant. now. It's brilliant. It's uh, brilliant. Somebody said on the show last week, uh, tradition is just peer pressure from dead people. And that song reminds me of that that sentiment. Whoa, you're, you're, you're taking all these aphorisms. <laughs> you're turning into Yoda here before our eyes. Oh, I'm having a go, Tim. I'm having a go. Um, of course, James is here because of uh, the uni disco and something that happened between the uni disco and the scout heart. Um, but James, James, it's, it's all down to Glenny's problem, isn't it? Um, the fact that you called James because you could have been called Paul. Is that right? Uh, yeah, we wanted to name it after somebody in the band, and we couldn't <laughs> name it Tim because he's the singer. Um, well, why not? Why is that? Why is, why I don't not? know because it just feel like it was like a, a kind of solo project right. or something. So <laughs> there was Gavin, which we thought was heavy metal for some reason. Yeah. I don't really know why we thought Gavin sounded heavy metal. Yeah. This leaves uh, James and Paul, and like no one ever called me James anyway. I was always I was Jimmy back then. Yeah, I'm Jim now. So it, it's never felt like my name anyway. To be honest with you, so I was more than happy to. To give it to the band. Absolutely. I think James Paul as well sounds like sounds like a hairdresser. He does a bit. Or it? Paul James. Yeah. If you get two Christian names, put them together, you get most hairdressers. Yeah, here you go. All right, so other peaks, other peaks, recent peaks. Uh, give us like a peak per decade. What was it? Give us an amazing moment that happened in the 90s. If you had to sort of, if you had to put a, uh, pick, pick a moment for a James poster from the 90s, what would the moment be? Two nights in GMAX in Manchester, playing to 10,000 each night. And we hadn't been played on radio except John Peel. We hadn't been on TV, and yet we were selling out 20,000. And we filmed it, and we were shattered. And um, so the, the film has got this kind of like... Uh, will this band get through the gig? Really? Yeah, I was oh, taking oxygen. I was taking oxygen. You know, it was like uh, as we was were... it actually oxygen? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and um... by the way, nice falsetto early in the morning on the last. <laughs> that was very punchy. I had to warm my voice up in the cab. The poor cab driver on the way in, man, he was complaining. Yeah, he took where, it. He where took are it very well. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. He took it very well. Actually, he was very surprised. He said he was going to listen to your show. Was well, actually so. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, very sweet. All right, him. so go on. Two nights at G Max. Yeah. Uh, what about uh, peak in the noughties? Give us a noughties post Ooh, the moment. Noughties peak. Um, oh, working with Brian Eno on the album Laid. And we attracted him for this demo of a song called Sometimes, yes. which is still probably one of our favourite songs. And and we hadn't, you know, I hadn't written the lyric. And, and he was like, have you written the ly lyric yet in the studio? No, I haven't written it. So we kept delaying playing it. And then finally we surround, you know, the band was surrounding him in, in real world studios. And we played the song. And we got to the chorus and he went white and he went and sat at his desk and put his head in his arms and his hands. And we were like, oh, my God, he doesn't like it. And we all kind of finished the song rather sheepishly, surrounded him and went, are you OK, Brian? And he said, I think I've just had the highlight of my musical life. And we were like, oh, my God, because we, we had Brian Eno to us was, was God. Yeah. Yeah. It was musical God. Yeah. And so for him to say that, I think, was one of the that most amazing. That's a moment amazing. and a half, isn't it? Yeah. That yeah. Was so you had to pretend to be like, quite cool with that. And then, <laughs> no, you know, I don't think we did. We did. I mean, <laughs> so into tears. James has never pretended to be cool. No. It's why, why we aren't as big as Oasis. You know, it's like cool has not been our middle name. Oh, no, but you are. I think if you try and be cool, you're not. And if you try not to be cool, you yeah. might. You yeah, might but that's be. the perspective of Yoda that's that's, <laughs> that's not that's not your guy in the street cool you are <laughs> and um, what did he say what did he find what did he what struck him so much about that particular track why did it have that effect on him don't know I think I think it, I mean it's a strange rhythm it's what yeah. is it in Jim? it's a strange it's in a strange time in it's, it's kind of it's a five bar cycle which is quite unusual Ooh. so it's hard to Stand kind of on. it's I know I'm sorry <laughs> it's just it's kind of hard to um uh, judge where it's the changes are going to come, right, right, and right. Tim somehow magically has come up with a vocal that just sits right across all that. What a lot! Very, very difficult to uh, do. Best Glastonbury moment. Mm. Um, do you like, like you like playing Glastonbury? Of course you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who doesn't like playing? Glastonbury? I don't know. I just thought I don't know why I asked that Love question. It. I thought, what if they we, don't? We oh. had a number. I mean, we were second on the bill the year England were playing a, a football game, and set the. Football game is on the big screen, mm. and we had two sets prepared: one for if England lost, <laughs> uh, and we were gonna we were gonna play some very sad songs, uh, oh, no. and one for if England won, and England won, so we got to play a bit oh, more. Oh my goodness, me—the gig that never happened. <laughs> the set, do you have it written down anywhere? 
No, I don't think we do. I mean, oh, you know, okay. we change the set every night in, in response yeah. to what's going on. So it, it, we had to do that. Well, that's exciting, isn't it? Um, right. You, so this this uh, sort of mini tour you're doing, it's, it's substantial, but it's a sort of mini tour. We have the eight dates. You go to tickets uh, for tickets, wearejames.com. Once again, uh, Aberdeen, Newcastle, Glasgow, Leeds, Cardiff, Birmingham, Manchester, London. Uh, throughout, what is it? Just 12 days in June. That's beautiful. Small and perfectly formed. Um, will, will the set list for those change around as well? Yeah, every night. That's cool. Isn't it, man? Well, it's it's the way we keep ourselves. Any rules fresh. underneath that spontaneity? Uh, I mean, there's probably sixty to eighty songs that we haven't it, like nearly ready to go what? That, that need a sound check or two. <laughs> How are you that with Chloe? You all right with that? Terrified. Yeah, I've got a surprise. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> woohoo! Uh, exciting stuff. Oh, she's totally she's totally game. Sure, yeah. you know, I mean, James was always about taking risks. Yeah. So. You know, our biggest gig we ever had with New Order, we sent Jimmy out to play acoustic guitar and Paul. Jimmy's never played gu- acoustic guitar in his life. And that terrible was the... on acoustic guitar. <laughs> I bet you're not. I bet you're terrible as the rest of our stream. <laughs> no, he is. He's State. terrible. <laughs> is he? <laughs> yeah. Cheers, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> and that was at the Brixton Academy. And so our thing is, you've got to take risks yeah. and the audience recognise that and, appre- and appreciate it. Yeah, and it's funny, isn't it? Because we're talking to, uh, to Guy Ritchie about how he keeps it fresh on set. And he says, yeah, everybody... Um, can uh, rehearse and everybody can learn the lines and they come and they change it and this, you know that all goes so there's a bit of spontaneity going on before that's not working it's not working but then they just roll so they don't do any retakes on a Guy Ritchie movie so so they, they can roll and roll and, so, you, so you can do it again but you don't stop and retake and that's the way he keeps it fresh and the way you keep it fresh and doing a radio show every day it's really important isn't it it's really important because people can tell they can tell whether this is a spontaneous moment as life should be or it's not it's a bit too safe for its own good if you like yeah, yeah. I mean, you've you've made a career out of that level of like, what am I going to say next? And you don't know, and and that makes then, it more exciting. Yeah, but then that can become the norm. So you've got to change that up sometimes. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. It's really interesting. I've um, just um, I, I've just I finished a, no- a novel. I'm going to plug it. Um, it comes out in about a month's time, and I. I didn't really have a plot. I'd put two characters in a room and they'd start talking and I think they were going to go out the the main door and they'd suddenly head towards the bedroom and it would be like, what are they doing? And you just follow it, you know, you just follow what the characters are telling you to do. And it's the same in songwriting when I'm doing lyrics. I don't know, I never sit down and go, I'm going to write about the ecological problems or, or it's a political song or a song about mobile no phones. You just start jamming and then those words come out and you go, oh, this song seems to be want to be about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you follow that. Because the words are coming in and then coming out, aren't they? So they're coming into you and then coming out. Totally. The biggest recurring theme in the songs you've written, the hundreds of songs you've written, the biggest recurring theme, is it? would it be love? Is it always going to be love? No, you know, I, I avoided love for years because it's such an overwritten area. So Fred Astaire was like the first, which took, took about 15 years. And but then the last I don't know the last couple of records have definitely been veering towards back to love. questioning what love is. They're all different versions. So that one's more about love as a a brick through a glass. Yeah. It's like one of those kind of like oh no this is going to really mess up my life kind of love. Um, so they and the the last one was about roomy spiritual love that kind of ecstatic sense of of oneness that yeah, yeah. one gets occasionally when we're lucky when we're running a marathon or <laughs> meditating or not that we like to talk about it um we never stop talking about it uh well done today it's brilliant 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 good luck on friday i hope it gets to number one on your album always a pleasure Thank okay you so much. it's great to see you again um can we hear it from the control room please first of all for mark's mixing board can we hear it from mark and his mixing board thank you can we hear it for um, Glennie's Fred Perry t-shirt? Yay! <laughs> Is it Fred Perry? It looks like Fred Perry. Like Fred Sorry. Okay. Um, and can we hear it for uh, Chloe's leather jacket, which is just <laughs> right there? And can we hear it for Tim's epic strides? <laughs> they may be the best trousers we've ever had in this building, and we've had some great trousers in this building. <laughs> Let's hear it for James, guys! Yeah. Yeah. Out now! Yeah. Tickets for the tour, we are james.com. Yeah.